Hi guys, it's Blair from Beautiful Hair by Blair on IG. Today, in today's video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the New York State Cosmetology Written Exam. I've already taken the written exam, so this is just what I've got from my experience of going to the written exam. I went on September 13th, 2001, and I went to a Franklin Square uh, location. So I'm just going to go over some rules that they go over just so that when you go to your state, you'll be completely prepared for what to expect. Okay, so these are general rules and many people should know it's common sense, but I'm just going to read through what they did on that day. Okay, so rule number one, turn your phones off completely. They told me that if it vibrates, if the alarm goes off, anything goes off by mistake, you can be kicked out of the test. So we don't want to take that chance, right? We don't want to waste our $15, waste our time, waste our energy, waste all the studying we did to come back just because our phone rang. So you can't charge your phone. You can't have your phone off. Everything completely, totally off and put away. Can't be on the desk. Can't be out. Can't take it to the bathroom, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you must wear a mask during the entire duration of the written exam. Now, try to get a comfortable mask that's not going to be tight around your ears, that's not going to be suffocating you or anything, just the most uh, comfortable mask you can find. I find that the jersey material masks uh, feel better. The cotton kind of have a little bit of fabric that comes off and also the disposable ones have a little bit of molecules that come off that irritate me. So I use the jersey cloth mask that I have that's uh, also washable and reusable. So I used that during the whole time and I was comfortable. It didn't bother me, it didn't irritate me or distract me from the actual written test. Okay, so you have to bring your New York State ID with the same name that you registered uh, the exam. Now, this seems like common sense, but a lot of people did not bring their exam, their ID to the exam, and they actually have to step off a line, call a relative for that New York State ID, which you should always have your driver's license permit or some kind of ID on you from the government at all times. Uh, you shouldn't walk out of the house for, even for safety reasons, you shouldn't walk out of the house. So that's a given, but it was like two people that didn't have it. So, all right. So another thing is when you walk in, you have to show your ID. They compare it with the name on the list and they give you a number. You don't get to pick your seat. So if you're there with your friend and you guys want to sit next to each other or whatever, um, you're not able to pick your seat or sit next to your friends. So I know there was two friends standing in line and one got in the back of the row and one was in the next row up front. So technically they were next to each other, but they weren't sitting next to each other. They spaced the desk so far apart anyway, like you really cannot see the other person's test at all. And to be honest, this test was so easy that if you have to cheat on this test, you, you really aren't prepared for it anyway. Um, all right, so to turn in your test, to go to the bathroom, you have to show your ID and the test booklet and they have to match to return it in. So it's not like we're giving our test booklet to somebody else or cheating or anything like that. They wanna make sure the person returning the book, the test booklet and the Scantron is the person on the ID. <clears throat> so when you get up to um, return your test, make sure you have that number that they give you and make sure that you have your ID already out so you're not like rummaging through your bag. All right, um, I brought a drink, of course, because um, sometimes my throat gets dry or whatever. Um, they give you four hours. I didn't know how long I was gonna be there for, but you can't actually have your drink on top of the desk it's got to be on the floor or in your bag or whatever so i put it on the floor because you don't want it in your bag because it may look like you're looking through something or trying to cheat or whatever um another thing i found you can't write in the booklet which is kind of weird for me because i like to write my answers in the booklet and then when i go over the test because i always take tests twice i go over the test and i pick the first answer that just pops in my head and then i go over it and put on the scantron but they don't let you write in the booklet. You can write X's or whatever. Um, I'm sure if you have a pencil, you can write a light X to, to do like process of elimination. And then you have to erase it clean as be a clean booklet. And they do check through the booklet to make sure that you didn't write in it. Okay. The place I went to, the desk was as big as the this book. Like the desk was totally small. I had to have my scantron on the desk and like literally my test booklet in my lap. 
because there was no room for anything. It would took up like, it was from my hip to like the middle in between my legs. That was all the room that they gave you, which I thought was totally annoying. But you don't know what you're going to walk into. Your desk could be huge. Your desk could be tiny. So just kind of like prepare for that. So the topics that I saw, first of all, I just want to talk about this book. This book helped a lot. I didn't do all of the um, questions, but I took the meat of the book, which is the Milady book. I took the meat of it and I studied like a few. And I'll tell you the chapters that I studied and that I wish I had studied. But either way, I passed the exam and it doesn't matter whether you get a, a passing, barely passing or 100%. Like, who cares? You passed. <laughs> Um, okay, so the topics that I reviewed, that I saw on the written exam are as follows. So, so the chemical perm and relaxer, uh, there were some questions on that. Uh, hair braiding, hair color, hair related diseases, hair structure, sanitation, structure of the nail, structure of the hair, hairstyles, weaves, the pH of the hair, uh, pH of different products like pH of shampoo, conditioner and perms which has the lowest pH etc uh, hair cutting questions nail tips and wraps facials hair removal like what's the difference between shaving and waxing um, the technical term for split ends pigment responsible for color hair color uh, natural hair color not like artificial hair color hepatitis uh, what is it is it a virus is it bacterial uh, another word for boil, which is a fernicle. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, extensions by the nape or crown of the head. What is that called? Uh, the fact that HIV leads to AIDS. That's easy. Um, what face shape is most ideal for hairstyle? So it was like square, round, whatever, whatever. That should be in the book. Um, while you, why you shouldn't file your nails after soaking. So if you get your nails done a lot, you notice that um, the nail techs do not soak the nails um, during a manicure anymore and so I guess that's a new thing that they found out that it messes with the it makes your nails weaker so that was a question um what happens to your neck when you apply darker makeup to the neck than the face does it get bigger does it get smaller does it get uh taller does it get shorter I didn't really know the answer to that one um how much your hair shrinks when it gets wet uh different types of massages so that's just what I remember from the hundred questions that I saw, like as soon as I came out the test, I wrote them down really quick just to give you guys an idea of what kind of topics to expect on the test. Okay, so chapters that I did study, I studied uh, chapter one, which is history and career opportunities. Uh, chapter five was just infection control. And they say infection control is like the biggest thing to study. Know what sanitation is, know what cleanliness means, know what sterilization is. All of the vocabulary words in there, you should write on index cards. And I have like a stack of index cards, like this much. I gave it to my friend because she's taking the exam uh, later on this month. But make sure you take all the vocabulary and know the vocabulary. Uh, I noticed the most difficult vocabulary was in the nails and the diseases. Um, because they're not very commonly used. Also, chapter seven, skin structure, growth, and nutrition. Chapter eight, skin disorders and diseases. Nine, nail structure and growth. 10, nail disorders and diseases. 11, properties of hair and scalp. 16, hair cutting. 17, hair styling. And 25, manicuring. 26, pedicure. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I did 11 chapters of review. Um, in this book, so I took the exam and whatever ones I got wrong, I wrote little notes next to them and I studied those 11 chapters and I got an 87. So I really wish I could have went through and studied all of the chapters, which is what I highly, highly recommend because just because I pass with this information, your test can have totally different information on it. Who knows? Um, I'm just kind of giving you guys a heads up on what my experience was. Um, so the chapters I wish I studied uh, was braiding and braid extensions, wigs and hair additions, principles of hair design, chapter 14, 20 chemical texture services, 21 hair coloring, and 22 hair removal facials. So I kind of had like less than a month to study for this. 
and I got this book pretty, pretty late. So I was only able to do 10 chapters and cards, index cards with 10 chapters, and I got an 87, so I passed. So um, just make sure that you take the most important chapters that you think. Like, you know there's going to be hair color, you know there's going to be chemistry on there, you know um, on the practical, we do hair coloring foils and weaves, uh, we also do perming, so you want to know about perming, pH of perms, the uh, chemical properties of perms, stuff like that. Um, but knowing the vocabulary helped me a lot on this test. Um, and the vocabulary is literally at the end of each chapter in this book. So if you go to the important chapters, you just look at this vocabulary and any words that you're like, hmm... I'm not going to remember what that means. Let me write this down and then study it off of your index cards. But this book um, you should have had during your cosmetology school career anyway. So this helped a lot. And also there was these two books that I got in school, which helped a lot. But that helped during the whole process of the nine months getting to my 2,000 hours. And doing that review the whole time helped. But refreshing my memory, this really helped. And you can find this book on Amazon. Um, it's about $30 and it's totally worth it. Um, so that's all I have. If you guys have any questions or any comments or anything you want to write, if you like this video, write that you loved it, that it helped you. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, I can make additional videos about uh, what to expect for the test. Um, but this is basically my summation of the test. And all of this information is good as of September 13, 2001. Things do change. Um, different locations have different rules, regulations. Some are stricter. Some are a little bit more lenient, depending on the uh, people that are coming in to take the test. So... That's all I have for now. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.